Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the macroverse. Today, we're going to talk about the recent rate hike by the United States Federal Reserve of 75 basis points. We will also discuss the implications of the speech that came afterwards. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can also sign up for the free ITC newsletter. You can find a link to that in the description below or in the pinned comment. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, earlier today, the Fed released another 75 basis point rate hike. That brings interest rates up to 3.25%, which is moving up again faster than it ever has before. We are not at levels higher than what we've seen before, but it's moving up quicker than it ever has before. This represents the third 75 basis point rate hike in a row, which as Powell noted, at the last meeting is an oversized rate hike, but they are sticking to what they previously said in their goals to front load the interest rate hikes to try to get inflation back under control. Now, I will also talk a little bit in this video about the idea of going above three and a half percent. Over the last eight or nine months, there's this, there's this line of thinking that says the Fed cannot go above three and a half percent because of, of the, the, the debt to GDP. And I will provide a, a little bit of commentary on that a little later in the video. But before we get to that, I wanna, I wanna go over some of the quotes that, that Powell said to give you an idea of where the resolve is with the Fed, okay? One of the things, I actually don't have the quote written down, but I wanna, I wanna talk about this one first before I get to some of the quotes that I, that I wrote down. The first thing that, that sort of popped out to me was that Powell was talking about how there's you know these these groups and these markets and they're they're discussing whether the Fed's going to raise another hundred basis points or you know like another hundred and twenty five basis points. Think about that for a second. He did not come out and say you know there, there there's some conflict with 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 the members as to whether we should raise twenty five basis points for the rest of the year or fifty. No, it's should they raise a hundred or a hundred and twenty five over the next couple of meetings. If they raise another hundred and twenty five basis points over the next couple of meetings, then what you're likely looking at is another seventy five basis point rate hike at the next meeting, followed by fifty after that. Or if they don't want to be that aggressive, right? If they if they if they want to only raise it a hundred basis points, then it would still likely be another two fifty basis point rate hikes, or perhaps a seventy five basis point rate hike followed by a twenty five basis point rate hike. So there's certainly different ways that you could get to those levels. But what stood out to me is the fact that he said that there, you know, the members are and what they're currently looking at is is the difference between a hundred to hundred and twenty five basis points not whether it's going to be 25 to 50. So I do understand that there's this idea that the Fed can't go above 3.5%, but even Powell is making it seem like they are going to go well above 3.5%. And furthermore, the markets themselves are saying that they will be above, well above 3.5%. You can see that if we go out to, to the November meeting, there's currently a 61% chance that we're going to have another 75 basis point rate hike. And by December, the target rate for the Fed funds is going to be approximately four to four and a half percent. You can see if you were to if you were to look at these probabilities here, 35.8% likelihood that it's going to be between four to four point two five percent, sixty-two point two percent likelihood that it's going to be between four point two five to four point five four point five percent. So one could argue that there's essentially a, like a 97% likelihood that the federal funds rate by the end of the year is going to be at least four percent. I think that makes sense. Considering that it's already at 3.25%, it would only take another 75 basis points over two separate meetings to get it to 4%. And considering that Powell made it clear that they are not done raising rates yet, it seems like we are ultimately going to get there this year. Okay, now I want to read out some quotes that I, I, I wrote down. I don't even know if I quoted them exactly, but I, I did it as quickly as I could as I was as I was listening to, to Powell's speech. One of the first things he said when he came out was he mentioned inflation. Okay, he's not talking about, he's not, he didn't, he, I mean, he did talk about jobs. He did talk about the softening of labor market conditions. That's not the first thing he said. The first thing he mentioned was inflation. And why? Inflation still remains high. It is still coming in too hot. 8.3% for headline inflation year over year is not acceptable to the Fed. And furthermore, core inflation at 6.3%, accelerating from 5.9% the, the month before for year over year core inflation, is just simply unacceptable. 
he did say, Powell did say, we anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate. So the idea that the Fed's going to pivot right now is, to me, it seems nonsensical, completely nonsensical. There's no, there's really no evidence that, that this is going to happen. And, and they're continuing to do what they say they, they've been going to do all year. Powell does acknowledge that higher interest rates are weighing on businesses. But at the end of the speech, he went on to say this. Higher interest rates, slower growth, and a softening of the labor market are all painful for the public that we serve. But they are not as painful as failing to restore price stability. So he's talking about inflation. So the Fed acknowledges the pain that they are causing businesses. They are acknowledging the pain that they're causing for, for, for just the general public. But they also say, while they are causing this pain and they are aware that they're causing it, What's worse is the inflation, okay? And he even says, he even says this, if we want to light the way to another period of a very strong labor market, we have got to get inflation behind us. I wish that there was a painless way to do that. There isn't. So he completely acknowledges, and he's done this before, that there is not a way to get through this pain-free and that there is likely going to be more pain to come, okay? Something else he said. And this is something that I've mentioned many times on, on my channel. A failure to restore price stability would lead to far greater pain later on. Now, we've talked about this quite frequently on this channel, have we not? We've looked at inflation year over year. Okay, you can look at inflation year over year. And we've acknowledged many times that if inflation stays high, what's it going to do? It's going to lead to a relatively stagnant stock market. Now, the first thing I will say is that, you know, when, when Powell's talking about some of these things, he's not necessarily talking about the stock market. That's what we always think he's talking about. And to some degree, he probably knows that that's how it's being interpreted. But one of the things to, to, to consider is that if the stock market is a representation of the U.S. economy, which a lot of people argue about whether it is or not, but if inflation stays high like it did in the 70s, you're just going to see very, a, a very stagnant period in the U.S. economy. Powell realizes this, okay? He acknowledges that this is the case. And he acknowledges that while the pain could affect you now by raising interest rates, right? It, it, it is going to cause some pain. Is this not better than dealing with inflation that becomes entrenched, right? This is the argument, right? Get the pain over with now so that we can proceed to a booming economy once again. And he even mentioned that. One of the quotes that he said and, and I'll, just, I'll just say two more quotes, and then I'll, I'll move on. But one of the things he said was, when inflation is under control, you can have 9, 10, 11-year expansions. We want to get back to that. Okay? So Powell wants to get back to a period where the economy is expanding again. By association, you would expect the stock market to expand as well for the better part of a decade. They want to get back to that but they recognize that they can't get there as long as inflation remains high. He also talked about how when you have inflation down, you know, at the target rate of around 2%, that's where you get these periods of expansion. That's what they're trying to get to. I think, I, I think what they're doing makes sense. I know not a lot of people like it, um, but I, I, I do think that ultimately getting inflation back down will lead to another booming economy. It's just going to take some time for us to get there. And the last quote I'll say before, I, before we move on from this is, is something that I've said many, many times, and that is hope for the best, plan for the worst, right? Hope for the best. You know, we hope inflation comes back down. I mean, wouldn't it be great if it came back down to, to 2% next year? That would be great, but we can't plan for that. We need to plan for the worst case, and the worst case is it, it, is it takes much longer to come back down, and therefore it will likely continue to affect markets. Okay, remember, markets will likely bottom well before the recession is over, assuming we go into one. Assuming we are in one, we can debate all day whether we're in a recession or not. My general thinking is that it, it certainly feels like a recession to me. With that said, I do acknowledge that there are a few indicators that, that, that say, you know what, maybe we're not in one yet. Okay, so again, you know, these are my own personal thoughts. I do, I, I guess I could easily carry a bias on that. Um, 
you know, when I when I see people, when I, when I just see a lot of a lot of pain in markets and whatnot, it, it's easy. And and also just to see two quarters of negative GDP, to see the two year flip to ten year. I'm not going to go into all that again because I, I spent a long time explaining that in prior videos. But when you see those types of indicators flash, it's like, well, we're in a recession. There is the fact that the three month is not a, has not yet flipped the, the the ten year, and we still see unemployment relatively low. So arguably, you could say we're not in a recession yet based on those indicators. Whether you think we're in a recession yet or not is almost irrelevant. What's more important is when does the Fed think we're in one? Because if the Fed thinks we're in a recession and inflation's coming back down, that will actually likely lead them to pivot. Not just because you're screaming, you know, at, at the at the computer screen like we're in a recession um, uh, already. Okay, so we need to we need to keep this in mind. Now, regarding the Fed funds rate and, and going above three and a half percent, I really don't buy the argument that they can't go above three and a half percent. There's a lot of people that, that seem somewhat married to this idea that three and a half percent is the terminal rate. I do, as I've said before, I do fundamentally disagree with this argument. I honestly don't think it makes a lot of sense. Number one, the, the debt is denominated in USD, which the Fed can freely print. So the idea that that they can't handle something like this to me just doesn't seem true. I will say I, I could easily be ignorant on this matter and somewhat naive. I mean, it's September of 2022. All of us at this point are essentially an armchair economist that are likely extremely ignorant on the matter, including myself. So I'm not going to try to become or try to pretend like I'm an expert at it because I'm not. Um, but there are there are some things that I, I don't necessarily agree with. I, I also would say that the debt is mostly a you know it's fixed rate right so raising the federal funds rate doesn't it doesn't change interest cost on existing debt right? so it would only change it on on new debt now of course you know new debt can be used to sort of pay off old debt but it, it's only going to immediately affect new debt not the debt that that's already sort of in the system so i i do think that's something to consider um, the other thing is that I, I would argue that it's ultimately in the, in the government's best financial interest uh, to, to grow real GDP. I think that is ultimately what their, what their goal should be. Um, and, and sometimes this is supported by, by increasing the federal funds rate, right? I mean, this is, this is how, how you can ultimately accomplish that goal, even in the short run, if it means uh, having to issue some, some more expensive debt. So I, I do get, I, I do... I hear the people that say three and a half percent is is the terminal rate, but I, I just don't simply I just don't buy it, right? I, I don't buy it. I think they will get to two four percent by the end of the year. Uh, one of the few types of debt as well uh, that that the cost would that would change immediately on would just be um, uh, the treasury treasury inflation protected securities tips, right? But bringing down inflation will prevent the the, the tips debt from increasing even even on existing debt. So I. I would argue ultimately that the the debt to GDP argument will ultimately not be um, sound in the end, right? I do think we'll go above three and a half percent. We should know soon enough. Markets are already saying 75 basis points at the next meeting. Um, even if it's 50 basis points, we're above we're above three and a half percent. So I, I do think I do think that is something that we we should consider, right? I mean, it's not going to take that much to get above above that anyways the other idea is that you know the the u.s debt it just is going to be inflated away and and this is um this is one of the reasons they can't go above three and a half percent i would argue that it can't necessarily just be inflated away like that um most of it economically i i, I would say is in in social security and um and medicare which are are, are more or less tied to inflation um and, and so I don't necessarily think that that argument is, is completely sound either. I think Social Security, of course, grows as, as, as wage growth grows and Medicare grows based on medical inflation and that the only portion of debt that can truly be inflated away, like a lot of people, like a lot of people talk about, is our, you know, our essentially outstanding notes and bonds. Um, but the only, again, going back to what I previously said, I think the only long-term solution to, to grow GDP, um, or sorry, the only the only sort of long term solution is to is to sort of just grow GDP so that whatever you know whatever the the percentage of taxes is, that you're collecting is ultimately a higher number. I, I think ultimately that that is um, sort of sort of my outlook. Again, 
I'm still formulating it. I'm not pretending to be an expert. I'm not. I just don't buy the debt to GDP argument as a reason that that they can't go above three and a half percent. And I think ultimately, um, you know, time will tell. Uh, we'll, we'll know here in a few weeks. I mean, beginning of November, they're going to raise the, 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 fun, the federal funds rate again, more than likely. And, and then I'll go above three and a half percent or it won't. We're either going to be at four percent by the end of the year or we won't. And if we're at four percent, then I think that argument that that people say is, is just completely out the window. Right. We're either we're either going to get capped at three and a half percent or not. Markets certainly don't believe it. And I don't believe it. I do think that we will be closer to four percent um, by the end of the year. Markets could say, I mean, right now, the the most likelihood, the, the highest likelihood is actually four point two five percent to, to four point five percent. OK, I mean, this is a 62.2 percent chance of occurring. Now, what are the effects that this has all had on markets? It depends on what it depends on what minute of the hour you looked at it. If you go look at Bitcoin, the one minute chart, well, what is this? You know, what is I, I say, you know, volatility incoming on Twitter. <laughs> like, like, you know, you can't trust anything that occurs. You go up, you go down, right? You go up, you go down. You can't trust any of the stuff that occurs during during these meetings. Um, it's best to just plan ahead of time and you go into it and you just brace for impact because every single time is, is, a, is a roller coaster. The NASDAQ is, is down a bit today, down about 1.2% at the time of this video. Just a few moments ago, it was all the way back up at, um, uh, the, the, at least the US 100 index was all the way back up to, to 12,000. Obviously, the US dollar currency index is, is pushing higher. We said that it probably would. Uh, and here it is, right? It, it continues to push higher. Remember, as the dollar continues to push higher, It'll likely continue to push risk assets down or at least under some level of pressure. It doesn't mean they can't occasionally rally. But look, I mean, as long as the Fed keeps raising interest rates and, and we're all tuning into the FOMC meetings every, every single month, you know, the, the, we're likely still a ways away from, from this longer period of expansion. You know, I think some people want to just see, you know, let's just have a bull market for six months and, and then deal with the consequences later. No, like, no, we, we did that in the 70s, okay? Let's get away from that. I would say Powell, I think, is doing what we, I think he's doing the right thing, honestly. I mean, I, I think he's 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 front loading interest rates. Kind of sucks, right? But if you're stacking cash, it doesn't. I mean, if you're stacking cash, you're kind of cheering the dollar on. Okay? And I've said all 2022, right? Stack cash is my is my personal goal, right? Not financial advice, doesn't be what you have to do, but um, certainly, if, if you're if you're listening to the to, to what Powell is saying, he acknowledges the pain that is being caused by raising interest rates, but he insists that the alternative pain is entrenched inflation, which we know how bad that can be, and we don't want to deal with that again. So, let's just see what happens at the next meeting. Okay, I'm guessing it'll be another at least 50 basis point rate hike. I'm guessing. So I would say minimum 50 is, is what I would expect at the next meeting, which should get the target rate at around 3.75%. Uh, um, and then uh, and then after that, I would expect probably pr potentially another 50 basis points. Okay. So I would say, you know, 50 or 75 at the next one. I kind of hope for 75, if I'm being honest, but 50 or 75 at the next one, the one after that, 50 or 75 again. Is, is is seems like it's the most likely outcome at this point. We'll see what happens. I mean, if they if they raise, if inflation comes in low, very very low next month, then um then then perhaps I'll, we'll have to we'll have to take that into consideration. But Powell even in that said that you can't put too much weight on one data point because if you looked at CPI data two months ago, it came in lower than expected. But then this month, or sorry, last month it came in lower than expected. This month it came in hotter than expected. And he said, you shouldn't overreact to just one data point because it, it doesn't necessarily go, it's not necessarily gonna behave linearly. It could be all over the place, right? The process could be stochastic um, uh, rather than linear. And I, I think we need to take that into consideration when when trying to figure out you know what will the fed do what will they not do it just because you get a, a, a hotter than expected inflation report or a lower than expected inflation report doesn't necessarily mean that the fed's going to react in the way that you think um especially considering that they don't necessarily put too much weight on on any one data point i think ultimately um the market is trying to figure out if, if this is going to be sort of like a, a, a deep recession. I, this is the battle that's taking place, right? Between the bulls and the bears. The battle that's taking place right now um, is ultimately, are we heading into, into a deeper recession? And, and I, I do think there's gonna be continued battles for the end of the year. I, I, don't, I don't really see any new all-time highs coming this year. 
Um, I, I don't. But continued battles between the Bulls and the Bears for the duration of the year. As we get into 2023 and, and the Fed and, and the Fed hopefully starts to see inflation coming back down, then hopefully we can start to sort of adjust our stance moving forward and, and try to come up with some general expectations for you know 2023 and, and 2024. But for essentially 2022, right? Cash is king. It's been king all year. And don't fight the Fed. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.